¿Cómo están todos? ¿Están bien hoy? ¿Están bien? Sí, muy bien. Todos muy están bien. bien. Muy bien, fantástico. Yo, yo también. Eh, estoy fenomenal, fenomenal para un para para lunes for Monday fenomenal um, it's hard to be fenomenal on a, a Monday for me para mí for me at least uh, I, I have not had nearly enough caffeine to say fenomenal but I will say fenomenal uh, bien voy a uh, hoy hoy vamos a vamos a hablar más de estos verbos de Cambio radical, these stem changing verbs, they call them radical stem verbs. Uh, Cambio radical, ustedes van a practicar, you guys are going to practice, van a practicar. Uh, vamos a introducir una categoría más. La última, the last, the last category. We'll explain why it's last. It is kind of like the caboose on the train. Uh, we're going to introduce the one last stem change. And we're going to get a little bit more into, uh, you know, we, we have that little short video on algún and alguna and all of those. We're going to expand on that a little bit, explain it a little more. We're going to take over the next few weeks some of these words that are like alguno and ninguno. And this is really more of a vocabulary thing uh, than it is a grammar thing. Um, we'll take those, expand on it, and talk about them. There is a segment in your book about it, but it takes everything all together, mashes it all together, and that makes it kind of a difficult topic. Because a lot of these words, words actually uh, have similar spellings they they start off the beginning of the word have they, they often have similar spellings and and if you cram it all together it becomes a big memorization nightmare so we're going to split it off into a bunch of little lessons uh so that it can be a little bit easier uh we'll see if carlos is carlos get in carlos may be trying to get in again okay uh muy bien Vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar con, um, oh, we're going to begin our stem changing thing with two verbs I did not throw in on your lists. Probably the most common stem change is that E changing into IE. Bien, right? But here's a, whoop, yeah, see, <laughs> aquí, I had to make sure I had the right verb. Aquí. Here's our verb, and it's a weather verb. Su, te va a gustar. You're going to like this because it's a weather verb. And we're going to do the like more weather stuff soon. Uh, nevar, nevar. Uh, this is a stem changing verb, nevar. Why did I not show this to you with the other IEs? Because we only use it in one conjugation. Nevar es to snow. To snow, nevar. But when we conjugate it, no one ever says, I snow, you snow, we snow. That does not happen. So it only gets, it's only possible to conjugate this verb one way. And that is changing this into an IE. So we start with nie. Nieva, boom, nieva, nieva, nieva in English is it is snowing, it snows, but if, and this is all, always a singular, but it can't be a yo and it can't be a nosotros, you know, I don't, I don't snow, we don't snow, okay, entonces, nieva, nie, nie, no nieva, no nieva uh, mucho en Arizona. No nieva mucho en Arizona. Ah, nieva en el norte de Arizona, ¿verdad? Nieva en el norte de Arizona. Nieva en las montañas de Arizona. 
para, pero, pero, pero aquí en Phoenix no nieva mucho. Hace dos años nevó un poquito. Two years ago it snowed a little bit, right? Sí, un poquito. Pero no nieva con frecuencia en Arizona. Excepto en las montañas o al norte, muy al norte, ¿verdad? Ok, nieva. Vale. We also talked about O to UE stem changes. Um, that is a somewhat smaller category than the E to IE, which are super common. Here's another one I did not give you in the O to UE. It's another weather word. Llover. Llover es to rain. To rain. It is a UE stem change. And just as nevar is only conjugated one way, and I have to put in the stem change, nieva. This is only conjugated one way, and it gets a UE. Llueve. Llueve. ¿Verdad? It rains. Llueve. Uh, entonces, normalmente, normally, normalmente, en Arizona, Llueve en, en agosto. Normalmente llueve en agosto aquí en Arizona, ¿verdad? Porque es la temporada, it's season, es la temporada del monzón. Because it's monsoon season. Normalmente llueve aquí en Arizona durante la temporada del monzón. Pero ahora no llueve en julio, ¿verdad? Este año, this year, este año, no llueve mucho en julio, ¿verdad? Este año. Ok. Uh, va a llover, va a llover, va a llover, ¿cuándo? Va a llover quizás en agosto, quizás en septiembre. ¿Bien? Ok. Vale. So, our, our two weather verbs happen to be stem changers. They just happen to be. Para que sepan, so you know. Um, I am going to assume... Uh, Carlos, tienes un letrero de Winslow. You've got a Winslow. Una foto de Winslow! Standing on a corner of Winslow, Arizona. Okay. <laughs> Bien. Me gusta. Uh, I assume you do not need me to review what it means to use a stem change. ¿Verdad? Sí? ¿Verdad? Okay. I want to show you a cute little video. It's got some memes with stem changes. So before we start our our homework and um, while I'm putting up the memes I will share with you what that homework was Ooh, momento. Uh, so that if you need to go find that piece of paper you can easily find it and please keep in mind I have uh, change this to a really, really huge format so I can put it up on the screen when we finally get to it. This is the homework page, which I had sent out to you ahead of time. So just so that you've got, uh, you can eyeball that and, and uh, you know, kind of search around for where did I put that piece of paper. That's usually what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, get a brief look at what that looks like. Okay, we will come back to that after we do our little warm-ups. Ah, uh, bien. El video. Okay. Uh, we're going to watch part of this video, not the whole thing, because uh, the whole thing is a little bit on the long side. I would rather you did practice. But it's a nice warm-up because uh, you do hear people using these uh, in memes, and they're kind of cute, some of them, and they use some changes. 
Aquí vamos. Ok. I'll try to make this bigger. Sí. Es mejor. Ok. Es como duermen las jirafas. Así es como duermen las jirafas. This is how giraffes sleep. <laughs> Así es. So it is. Así es quiere decir so it is. Y así es como duermen las jirafas. This is how giraffes sleep. And this is how giraffes sleep. So what's our verb? Duermen. What's the infinitive form of duermen? Dormir. Dormir. To sleep. That's right. Ellos, las jirafas, duermen. So we see we have a O to U E vowel change. Dormir, las jirafas duermen. Our next meme. <laughs> Vuela, humano. Fly, human. Mi planeta me necesita. My planet needs me. Vuela, humano. Vuela means fly. ¿Qué es el infinitivo? Volar, volar, to fly. So this is another example of a O to U E stem changing verb. Volar, vuela, fly, human. Suelta la comida. Let go of the food. Suelta lo, la comida y yo te dejaré respirar. Let go of the food and I will let you breathe. Suelta. ¿Qué es el infinitivo? Soltar. Soltar is to free or to let go of. So again, we have another example of our O to U E stem change. Soltar. Suelta. Suelta la comida. Okay. This beautiful rock formation is known as Roca del Elefante. Roca del Elefante. And where is it? ¿Dónde está? Se encuentra en las Islas Vesman, Islandia. Se encuentra. It is found. It is found in the Vesman Islands in Iceland. So, se encuentra. It is found. ¿Qué es el infinitivo de encuentra? Encontrar. Encontrar to find. So once again, we have a O to U E vowel change. Se encuentra. All right, our next meme. Cuando estás feliz, disfrutas la música. When you're happy, you enjoy the music. Cuando estás triste, entiendes la letra. When you're sad, you understand the lyrics. So our stem changing verb here, entiendes, entiendes, ¿qué es el infinitivo? Entender, entender, Here's our next type of stem change, E to IE. Entender, tú entiendes, tú entiendes. E to IE change for entender, understand. Qué bonito me siento, qué bonito me siento. How pretty I feel. And actually, I think this is my favorite meme of all. Que bonito me siento. So our stem changing verb here, sentir. Sentir, say, is reflexive to feel. So, que bonito me siento. Once again, we have a E to I E stem change. Que bonito me siento. Hola, me gusta la comida. Hi, 
I like food. ¿Tienes comida? Do you have food? ¿Qué es el infinitivo de tienes? Tener. Tener. So another example of an E to I E stem change. Tener. Tú tienes. ¿Tienes comida? Do you have food? Here we have a graphic. It says, Cualquier canción, any song, donde comienza la letra, here's where the lyrics start, comienza, start, donde yo creo que comienza la letra. So where I think that the lyrics start. Donde yo creo que comienza la letra. So, comienza, starts, so our infinitive will be comenzar, comenzar, to start. So, once again, we have a E to I, E stem changing verb. Comenzar, comienza. Okay. Tiburones, tiburones, sharks. Ellos solo quieren ser tus amigos. Ellos solo quieren ser tus amigos. They only want to be your friends. Oh, what a nice shark. Ellos solo quieren ser tus amigos. They only want to be your friends. So, ellos quieren el infinitivo. Querer, querer, to want. So here again we have E to I, E stem change. Querer, ellos quieren. Okay. Okay, we're going to stop it there because she gets into a different kind of stem change. Um, <laughs> I will send you the full... Um, the full video uh, in the email link later on. That's just for a little warm up. Está bien. Ahora, um, ¿tienen preguntas antes de, antes de, de ver la tarea? Do you have any questions before we start the homework? Sí o no? Marilyn? Sí, sí. So. Uh, the example of comienza. So is it donde yo creo que comienza? Why is it not comenzo? Uh, it oh, don't they I, Yeah, I think the lyrics start. Where, where the lyric starts, because yeah. I don't start the lyric starts. Oh. It's the, yeah. The word for lyrics, which in English is like one of those odd, it, it's plural, lyrics, because it's a bunch of words, I guess, right? In English, in English. Right. Uh, so it's a singular thing, la letra. La letra. It was referring to the lyrics, not I. Okay. Right. Sí. Eso es. Eso es. Okay. Vamos a practicar aquí. We're going to practice some of these. Stem changing verbs are quite, quite common. There are a whole lot of them. Um, when you hear an IE in the middle of a verb or an UE in the middle of a verb, you can always assume it's stem changers. So, we're going to take a look at this and see if you can both make the changes and if you know what the whole sentence says. So I'm going to share this and I have changed the, uh, I have changed the font so it is big enough to see in case you don't have the paper and you need to you know, check it out on screen. Es muy importante saber lo que quiere decir. It's also important besides knowing the stem change to know what this, these words mean. You know, getting to know what all these words mean is super important, which is why we have the little translation after every fill in the blank. So I'll chew off, the, spit out the first one here. Perdón. Perdón, yo no entiendo lo no en, uh, uh, yo no entiendo lo que usted me dijo. 
Yo no entiendo lo que usted me dijo. Y voy a escribirlo aquí. I'm going to write it in here. Uh, entiendo. ¿Verdad? Uh, ¿Qué quiere decir en inglés? What is that in English? ¿Qué es en inglés? I don't understand what you said to me. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. I don't understand what you said to me. And lo que means what. Just know that when, when we use what, not as a question word, but in a, a, a statement here, what you said, uh, lo que can mean what in that situation. Uh, usted me dijo is just putting the, the, the to say verb in the past. So I wouldn't expect you to know how to translate that. Muy bien. I have a question. Sí, sí, Isaac, sí. dime. Uh, why do you have to say lo que usted me dijo? Or can you drop it usted to say lo que me dijo? You can just put it lo que me dijo. You could just, you could leave out the usted. So you could leave out the usted. confusing when you use usted. In, um, in this sentence, because it's out of the context, uh, you know, I could mean I don't understand what he said, or I don't understand what she said. Dijo could mean he said or she said, instead of you said, usted dijo. Because dijo goes with él, with ella, with usted. It's just a past tense form. So when I have a sentence like this and it's out of the context of a conversation, you don't know what was said beforehand, you don't know what was said afterwards, it's easier to put in that identifier, that pronoun usted. That's all. It would be normal to drop the word usted when if people are talking back and forth and you know they're making eye contact with you, you know they mean you using usted. And you don't need to say the word usted. Okay. I think here numero dos. Somebody want to take on number two and the whole sentence. Toda la frase, por favor. I'll take a stab at it, Miro. Okay. Muy bien. <laughs> El correo cierra a las four de la tarde. A las, ah, a las cuatro. Cuatro de la cuatro, tarde. Cuatro. Cuatro. <laughs> Así es, sí. Cuando vemos los números, when we see those numbers, sí. El cerebro. <laughs> Quiere decirlo en, en inglés. Ah, El correo cierra a las cuatro de la tarde. Cierra, cierra, closes, closes. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? ¿Qué es en inglés? Well, this is what I had a question about. It, it translated as the mail closes at four in the afternoon. Would they that, say it like that? Or? Well, in that case, el correo means post office. Okay. Ah, yeah, el correo here, correo can mean the mail, like just the big wad of, of letters that you got in your mailbox, right? Or had delivered into your mailbox. Uh, but here, correo would mean post office. Okay, magnifico. Numero tres. ¿Quién quiere numero tres? Who wants to take on number three? Okay, I'll do it. Okay, muy bien, Carlos. La reunión empieza a las nueve de la mañana. Exacto. Empieza. The meeting starts at nine in the morning. Exacto, sí. Uh, y reunión, it could mean reunion. It's more likely to mean meeting. Reunión, sometimes conferencia, conferencia, conference, but reunión muy común para meeting. Okay. Uh, La reunión empieza a las nueve de la mañana. The meeting starts at, or the meeting begins at 9 a.m. Bien? Empieza, empieza. And the important thing is that I'm hearing you say those IE stem changes in the middle, and I'm hearing that with audio. Número cuatro, cuatro, yo. ¿Quién quiere? ¿Quién lo quiere? Who wants it? Okay, I'll do it. Okay, Sue. Yo... Re recomiendo la filete a la parrilla. 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 Sí, parrilla es, uh, parrilla es grill. You know, like a barbecue grill. I was just watching some South American show and they call parrilla. <laughs> ah. 
Ya. Yeah. Ok. Yo recomiendo, recomiendo, and I'm hearing all your IEs in there, so that's great. Yo recomiendo la, uh, la filete a la parrilla, a la parrilla. Uh, and I recommend the grill filet or grill steak. Um, yeah, filet, a grilled filet. A la parrilla means grilled. It's thrown on the barbecue as opposed to stuffed into the oven, right? Uh, recomiendo, I recommend... The, the grilled filet or the barbecued filet. Bien? Perfecto. Número cinco. ¿Quién quiere cinco? I can take it. Um, okay. Mis amigos prefieren la especialidad de la casa. Okay. So, uh, my friends uh, prefer the specialty of the house. Specialty of the house. Prefieren, prefieren. This is one of the hardest words for English speakers to pronounce. Uh, I have Pre a question on this. Pre I have a question. Sí, sí, dime. Now, if, uh, if uh, the E changes, is the, the stem change to IE, and you have two E's in a word, which one gets it? Exacto. And I heard that if it's three syllables, the E in the middle changes. Well, there's an easier way to tell than even that. And actually, there are quite a few verbs where you have more than one E. You look at this uh, verb, preferir. Ooh, perdón. Got to get my cursor in the right place. Pre, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, quiere. Oh, I know why. Yeah, I'll get rid of this to type it in here. Okay. Uh, preferir. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, tenemos dos. Tenemos dos es. We've got two e's. Mm -hmm. We've got two e's. And actually, I'm going to take this off of sharing so I can show you on my big card. Es más fácil. Voy a mostrarles. Voy a mostrarles aquí. Preferir. So here is the question that Isaac had, and and it's a, an excellent question. Es, es una pregunta magnífica. Uh, Lots and lots of these stem changes will have more than one E. Now, you know which one it is because I, I have it in a different color. My, my color balance is not so good. I don't know if it's coming through. It's this one. Here's how you can tell. It's whatever E. The E that gets the stem change is whichever one is closest to the AR or ER or IR. Whichever one is right in the syllable next door. So if I've got a choice of two E's, it'll be whatever, whichever one is right next door to the E-R or the A-R or the I-R ending here. What about the case of entender, where you have three E's? Entender, three E's. Well, it can't be the E from the E-R of entender. It can't be that last E, right? Because that last, okay, we know it can't be this E because that's part of, this, uh, part of the ending, right? But it's gonna be one of these two. Well, it's whichever vowel is right next door to the ER. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so rather than trying to like mentally do the gymnastics of counting back a certain number of syllables, like, how many syllables do I count back? This sounds like a math problem. Uh, all you do is you change the one that is right next door to the AR or the ER or the IR, whichever kind of verb it is. It's whatever is right next door. Es así. It is that way. And that is an excellent question. Es una pregunta muy importante. That is a really super important question uh, that almost all people have. Uh, when they're studying these verbs, because a lot of verbs have those funny, um, you know, have that funny situation of having uh, more than one, uh, more than one E. Okay. Los invitados. Los invitados. ¿Quién quiere? Es número seis. ¿Quién quiere el número? Okay. Magnífico. Los invitados vienen esta noche a las ocho. Exacto. Exacto. Sí, sí. Vienen, vienen. ¿Y qué quiere decir en inglés? What is that in English? The guest. The guest. I'm all right. Night at eight o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Invitados means the invited ones. But if you said the invited ones in English, people would think you were weird. Invitados means guests. Mm -hmm. Whoever you invited, los invitados, the guests. The guests are coming tonight, esta noche. This night means tonight, esta noche, a las ocho. The guests are coming tonight at eight. Bien. Mm -hmm. How would you Ma say invitations? Uh, invitaciones are invitations. Invitaciones. Yes. Invitaciones. Invitados means those who are invited. Los invitados. Mm -hmm. Okay. Muy bien. Ah, estamos en número siete. Siete, ¿verdad? Siete. Aldo. Okay. Aldo. Bien, Mary. Habla, habla más um, despacio, por favor. Nosotros no está Entendemos. Entendemos, ya. Yeah. Entendemos. Entendemos. Entendemos, and this one does not do the stem change because it is... Nosotros. Nosotros. Nosotros and vosotros do not get the stem change, those two. And because we don't use vosotros in the Latin American side of Spanish, it's kind of not an issue it is in Spain. Okay, so... You just really need to know that in nosotros form does not get the stem change. It goes back to whatever vowel originally was in that intended. No entendemos. Bien. Uh, speak slower, please. Hable más Hable más despacio. Hable más despacio. That is not a typo. That word hable. Hable. There is a command. It says, it gives an order. Speak. Speak. Speak slower, please. Mm. We do not understand. Muy bien. Ocho. Estamos en... Uh, sí, sí. Um, what's the difference between lento and despacio? Oh, okay. Lento is just slow. Más despacio is also slow. Más despacio, more slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, slower. Can you say más lento? Uh, sí, sí. Uh, despacio is, I think, much more common when you ask somebody to speak slowly. Uh, lento is used more for, um, well, lento is a description of somebody or something that is slow. Uh, es una canción muy lenta. It's a slow song. Um, la tortuga es un animal muy lento. Turtle is a really slow animal. Okay. Can you say despacio? Despacio would be more common when you're talking about uh, speaking slowly. They would be more inclined to use that word. One is for speaking, one is for speed. Like a car speed. Oh, oh, a speed for a car? Just the word speed? Word, the word speed is velocidad. No, I said the car isn't slower, más lento. Okay, sí, 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 un carro. For, yes, for car, lentos is, es perfecto, es perfecto. Ah, uh, bien. Bueno, estamos en ocho, ¿verdad? Estamos en ocho, ¿no? Ok, muy bien, sí. Oh, ok. Uh, son las siete de la noche y nosotros tenemos mucha hambre. Tenemos. Tenemos. Mm -hmm. uh, it is seven o'clock at night and we are very hungry. Exacto. Son las siete de la noche y tenemos uh, uh, mucha hambre. And of course, nosotros is just there to tell you who is doing the action. Normally, we would leave it out and it would be son las siete de la noche y tenemos mucha hambre, but you need to know what the subject is. So we put the word nosotros in there. Is the, uh, mucha, the mucha doesn't change for plural? Or is it mucha hambre? Oh, mucha hambre. Sí, es mucha hambre. Not muchos. Not muchos, no. Uh, hambre is hunger. It is actually a noun. Uh, this thing, tenemos hambre, tenemos hambre, it's one of those tener idioms. We, in English, say somebody is hungry. In Spanish, you have hunger. 
as is the case in French and I think in German as well, uh, you have hunger. Because hunger is a noun, a thing, uh, we can't say muy hambre, it has to be mucha hambre. Hambre is a, a feminine word. Uh, mucha hambre is much hunger. We would say very hungry in English. So we can't really use the word very with hambre. Hambre is a noun, that's why we have to use mucha with it. Okay. Aquí, tener. Tener, tener. Uh, we've got a weather expression, which says it's really hot. ¿Quién quiere? Who wants this one? ¿Quién quiere el número nueve? nueve? Okay, Carlos, sí. Hace mucho calor, tienen ustedes sed. Tienen ustedes it's sed. Very are, it is very hot. Are you thirsty? Exacto. Are you guys thirsty or are you thirsty? But it's the plural you, right? We might say you guys or just you in English. Hace mucho calor. It is really hot. We'll uh, do some uh, weather things and about, uh, well, maybe next week we will be able to have time to get to that. Uh, Tienen ustedes set another tener idiom, one has thirst. In, in English, is thirsty. In español, has thirst. Tienen sed, have thirst, aquí. Okay. Uh, and here we need a little word, extra word, me. Uh, perder is to lose a thing. Perderse is to get lost. So when I put a me in front of the verb, I'm going to change it to I get lost. Uh, ¿Quién quiere el número diez? Who wants to tackle diez? Okay, yo. Okay. Yo no me pierdo cuando tengo una, un mapa. Yo no me pierdo cuando tengo un mapa. I don't get lost, lost when I look at the map. When I have a map, when I have a map, okay? Uh, and the me pierdo, actually, that kind of has to go together to mean that somebody is lost versus they lose a thing. We need that me to work together with the verb pierdo, okay? Uh, and for now, you just need to accept that that is what it is. <laughs> to get lost means I need that extra little word me in front of pierdo. Okay, uh, dormir. Once, once. ¿Quién quiere once? I'll do it. Okay. Duermes ocho horas cada noche? Exacto. Duermes. 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 Ocho horas cada noche. Do you get eight hours of sleep each night? Do you sleep eight hours yeah. every night? Each night, every night. I see what well, it's the same there. Exacto, muy bien. Encontrar. Encontrar es to find. ¿Quién quiere el número doce? Doce, alguien. Okay, magnífico. Uh, que mala suerte. Yo no. Encuentro mis llaves donde están. Yeah. But, bad luck, but bad luck, I can't find my keys. Where are they? Yeah, I can't find my keys. Where are they? Uh, yo no encuentro mis llaves. Uh, encontrar. And encontrar can mean to find. Remember in that little video, she used it as se encuentra with that, that elephant looking rock, right? Uh, la roca de elefante, uh, se encuentra, se encuentra, putting a se in front of it, se encuentra, changes it to is found. It changes it to kind of a passive voice. So encontrar can have a few little changes to its meaning depending on, on what other words we slip in there. Se encuentra, is found, but here just yo no encuentro, I can't find them. Uh, trece, trece, poder, to be able, or can, to be able or can. Can okay, quiere trece? Okay, sí. Uh, mi esposo no puede encontrar su cartera. Ah, exacto. Uh, puede, mi esposo no puede encontrar. My husband cannot find, find his wallet. Sí, cartera es wallet. There are a few different words for wallet. 
ca uh, cartera o billetera. Billetera, and I will put that on the side here. Billetera, depending on where you travel, billetera is also another word for wallet. People, I think really in all countries know that both of those words are used for wallet. It just depends on what area you're in. Marilyn, I had one question about this. Uh -huh. um, I saw two different translations where my husband cannot or is not able to. Are those both correct translations? They're both correct because poder means to be able to or can, either way. Sí. Otra pregunta, another question. Is uh, cartera no. also means purse? Uh, oh, yeah. can it mean purse? It, uh, it could. It, uh, if, if strictly you're talking about whatever holds your money. Yeah. Some purses are really small, you know, and if, if it's that small, if you've just got money in it. Yeah. Uh, or, what you know, is the cards. other word for for a uh, wallet? Oh, uh, aquí. I'm going to highlight it right here and put it in a nice big bold. Billetera. Billetera is another word for wallet. Uh, a billete is a, a, a ticket, um, you know, mm -hmm. often used for like subways or a ticket to get into the movies, you know, whatever, billetera. Mm -hmm. So billete is a little piece of paper, right? So billetera, you know, you might put that in a wallet. I guess that helps you remember it, maybe. Uh, and now we've got volar. Here's one of those verbs from our, our little meme. Volar, to fly. Alguien quiere catorce? I, I can do. Vale. Um, nosotros volamos y uh, llevamos las mascarilla, mascarillas. Sí, mascarillas. Ok, volamos. Y aquí es volamos. We do not have a stem change because again it's the nosotros. Son. Volamos mm -hmm. y llevamos. Aquí llevamos es, um, we have more the idea of where. Wear as in an item of clothing. Llevar can have more than one meaning. Uh, volamos, volamos y llevamos las mascarillas. We fly and we may wear masks. Mm. Okay. Uh, ¿Quién se? ¿Quién se? Isa, ¿quieres? Oh, no. Okay, I'll go. Uh, where are we? Salgo a las nueve, pero uh, vuelvo a las tres, vale? Um, yeah. I'm leaving at nine, but I'll return at three. Is that okay? Yeah, right. Vale is just asking for affirmation, okay? Uh, vuelvo, vuelvo a las tres. Vuelvo a las tres. Vuelvo, I return. I come back. Volver is to return or to come back to a place. Not to return, not to return an item. Like, uh, oh, I'll give this back to you. That is not volver. Volver is to return to a place, to a spot, to a geographic location. Bien. Uh, Volver a also has a special meaning. We'll take that yet another day. Volver a, but volver just here is talking about coming back to a place. Dieciséis, dieciséis, dieciséis. Okay. Okay, bien. Okay. Um, nosotros no podemos oír los anuncios. Exactly. We, can, we cannot hear the announcements. We cannot hear the announcements. Anuncios can also mean an ad, like an advertisement, whatever. See, ¿sí? uh, no podemos oír. Y podemos aquí, podemos, uh, no hay cambio de radical. There is no change, right? Because it's the nosotros form. Vale. Uh, unos más. Diecisiete. Diecisiete. ¿Puede, puede usted repetir la información? Exacto. Puede usted repetir. Can you repeat the information? Can you repeat the information? Can you repeat the information? Uh, we've got volver one more time, una vez más. 
y hablamos de, del autobús. Now we're not talking about a person coming back, but a thing coming back. Uh, el autobús vuelve un, en un hora, ¿verdad? Uh, the it, bus returns in an hour. Right. The bus returns in an hour or the bus comes back in an hour. ¿Verdad? And verdad is one of those end questions, right? It means right. Uh, literally, verdad is truth. But when the people use it as a tag word at the end, as a tag question, I should say, at the end, then it means right or isn't that true? Uh, bueno, futbolistas son soccer players. Ista ma makes it a profession or a person who does that thing. And here it's futbol, a sport, es un deporte, no? And here is one of our odd ones. This is not really O to UE, it's U to UE. It is the only U to UE stem change. But we put it in this category because also we talk about pets playing, kids playing, people playing games or sports, right? So, los futbolistas. Los futbolistas jugan en el estadio mañana. Okay, but instead of jugan, we need to make it a U-E, U-E. Juegan. 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 Sí, es importante. It's important I hear that juegan. Los futbolistas juegan en el estadio mañana. Uh, the soccer players are playing at the stadium, stadium or in the stadium tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ah, uh, exacto. Hay tres más. Three more. Oh, here we're going way, way, way back to something that you did a long time ago. Costar to cost. Cuestan. Los pantalones. Cuestan. Cuestan. Cuestan 20 euros. These pants cost. And pantalones is a plural word, so cuestan is a plural verb. Okay, cuestan. Cuestan is only used with cuestan, they cost, or cuesta, it costs. Just those two forms. Uh, costar, otra vez. We got costar again. ¿Cuánto? ¿Cuánto cuesta? Cuesta. cuesta. ¿Cuánto cuesta el menú del día? How much does the menu of the day cost? Menú del día... Um, ustedes deben saber, you guys should know. Uh, menú del día means menu of the day, but that has a special meaning. El menú del día is whatever is the uh, special item for that day at a restaurant. So el menú del día uh, means they make up extra of this thing, and it's usually a combination. So menú del día is always the best value a restaurant has to offer. Mm -hmm. With menu, when you order a menu del día, you will get whatever is set for their main dish, plus an entree of some sort, a salad or a soup, plus a little dessert, plus one glass of wine or beer, whichever your preference is. So you're, you're getting your drink, your little entree, your main meal, and your dessert all wrapped into one price. So... Whenever you see menu del día with a listing of here's what it is for the day, that's always the best value that the restaurant has to offer. This verb probar means a few different things. It can mean to test something. It can mean to taste something, to take a sample of it. It can mean to try clothing on. When you try clothing on, you're testing it out on your body to see if it fits, right? If you're taking a taste of something, you're testing it out to see if the seasoning is right, okay? So, probar. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice la pregunta? How do we say this question? Pruebas. 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 Pruebas este vino. Are you tasting this wine? Do we Pru keep the R? Is it P R U? -E? Oh, P perdón, sí. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Pruebas. La R es importante. Pruebas. 
Pruebas. Pruebas este vino. Are you trying this wine? Are you tasting this wine? Pruebas. Okay. Bueno, ¿hay preguntas o no? Marilyn, I just had a, a quick question sí, sí. About, number, about number 19. Not so okay. much about the verb. Um, futbolistas refers to soccer players. Would you also call them footballers? You could. I, I, do they do that in Britain? I think they might. I, that's what I was wondering. I thought I'd heard that before. I think I've heard that verb before. So, por ejemplo, entonces, por ejemplo, es común decir tenista, a person who plays tennis, tenista. Roger Federer es un famoso tenista. Bien? Uh, ista is used with a lot of sports terms. Um, I think I've even heard baseballista at times, but jugador. Jugador is another word for player or jugador. Jugador. When we change jugar to jugador, it means a person who plays whatever sport that is. Jugador de tenis, jugador de fútbol, jugador de basketball, así, like that way. So, but ista is just a, a quick thing of talking about somebody who does that thing, whatever is in the first part of the word. Uh, like we say, artist, a person who does art. Okay. Bien. Okay. Uh, la semana que viene, for the, our week that is coming, when you get the email later today, I will take a lot of these verbs and I will put them into question form so that you practice these verbs again next week but you practice it speaking back and forth to each other. Está bien. So, por ejemplo, um, you'll be asking each other what uh, people do or do not understand. You'll be asking each other questions about what people do or do not prefer. Uh, you'll be asking people back and forth questions about how much something costs. You'll be asking questions about what somebody can or cannot do. So we'll be taking a lot of these verbs and putting them into different things, sentences, but sentences that are questions that you start to ask each other. Use these verbs again to get the meanings down in a conversational uh, setting. Está bien? Mm -hmm. Okay, man. So you'll get those questions ahead of time with the email. And uh, that'll be just another layer, uh, uh, slightly, Harder exercise, we'll bump it up to something harder that is more personal where you talk back and forth with each other using that. Okay. Magnifico. Ahora, a menos que tengan otras preguntas, unless you've got some other question to follow that up. Uh, what I want to do is take a look at that third category of STEM changes. It won't take too long to explain this. Okay. Pero es importante. Es importante. Okay. We've got E to I E verbs, right? We've got entender, tener, querer, empezar to begin. Cerrar, to close or shut. Pensar, to think. Venir, to come to a place. Divertirse, you notice we kind of avoided this because that is a really long word. Plus, it's got an extra pronoun, so we're going to skip that for now. Uh, perder, comenzar, uh, Preferir, here's the hard one to pronounce, preferir, preferir, uh, bien. We've got those, we've got O to U, E. Poder, jugar, uh, probar, to try on or taste or sample or test. Costar, to cost. Contar, to tell a story or to count. Oddly enough, two meanings. Uh, dormir, to sleep, ¿verdad? Encontrar, to find, 
Uh, volver, to return to a place, to come back. Recordar, to remember. Uh, morir, to die. Duh. <laughs> Almorzar, to have lunch, to eat lunch. It's all one word, almorzar. Uh, soñar, to dream. Uh, ooh, doler, that's a special one, to, to hurt. We'll take that in a different lesson. Lots of O to U E stem changes. Okay. There's one last kind of stem change I'm going to share with you on the screen what it looks like. I will send you this file, so don't feel that you have to take notes. You need not take any notes. You will get this, and you can download it onto your computer. There is a third category, E changing just to I. Not E to I, E, but E to I. This we take last because it is the smallest category. There are fewer verbs than the E to I, E category. There are even fewer than there are of O to U, E. It is a small category. However, there are a number of verbs that are kind of important that fall into this category. Again, an E to I, E stem change might be an AR verb, meaning it has these endings. It might be an ER verb, meaning it uses these endings. It might be an IR verb, using these endings. I will tell you that for E to I, pretty much what it winds up being usually is this group, IRs. It just is. Okay, let's take a look at what they look like. They're gonna have that shoe or boot format. Anything falling within the shoe or boot gets the stem change of E to I. Things, and that, that means nosotros will not get the stem change, nor vosotros. So, pedir, to ask for, and the for is included in there. We don't need the actual word for. It's all built into that verb. Pedir is to ask for something, not to ask a question, to ask for. Or to order something, which is the same as to ask for, right? So, here's how it's going to sound. It will not be IE, it will be just I. Pido. 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 La forma de tú, pides, pides. La forma de él, ella, usted, pide. La forma de ellos, ellas, ustedes, piden. But we go back to the P-E of pedir when we do nosotros. Pedimos, pedimos, pedimos. Pido, pides, pide, piden, pedimos. If you're in Spain, pedis, you guys order, you guys ask for. Okay, let's take a look at two other verbs that use the same thing of E to just I, not E to IE. And this really only happens in, in the IR infinitives. Um, servir, to serve. So that's a nice cognate verb, servir. So it becomes sirvo, yo sirvo. Tú sirves, él sirve, ella sirve, usted sirve, ellos sirven, ellas sirven, ustedes sirven. But we go back to S-E-R for the nosotros for servimos, 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 o vosotros servís, ¿ok? Muy importante. This next verb right next to it is super important because it is a verb that is used when people tell you directions. Like if they tell you keep going straight or keep doing something, you know, keep, keep going straight till you get to the light, then turn left, they will use this ver verb, seguir, seguir. And this is a very hard verb to conjugate because it has all kinds of oddball, oddball, strange spelling things in there. Seguir means to continue. Seguir means to follow. 
Seguir uh, has an oddball thing happening with yo, sigo. The e changes to I, si, but that you from seguir disappears for the yo form. So it becomes sigo. Sigo. The reason the U disappears is that if I put the U back in there, it would sound like this. Siguo. <laughs> Siguo. And that's not how we want it. We want it to have the sound of seguir. S-E-G-U-I-R. The only thing that U does, it, its job in seguir is to give the G the hard g, g, g sound. But the U by itself is not pronounced. And so that U is really superfluous. For the yo form, the U will not even appear because G-O already makes it a hard G sound. So there's no reason for that U to step in and give the G the g, g sound. So it's sigo, sigo, sigo. But now the U has to come back to give the G the g, g, g sound again. So, la forma de tú es sigues. Sigues. Él sigue. He keeps on going or she conti or he continues. Ella sigue. She continues or she keeps going. Usted sigue. Okay. Ellos siguen. Ellas Siguen. Ustedes siguen. Okay. When we go back to the softros form, we go back to the E from seguir. Seguimos. Seguimos. Okay. So seguir is a tough one for spelling because of uh, the funny things that G does. <laughs> We're going to take a look at a couple other ones that are in the E to I category. Uh, repetir, repetir. Here's a verb we use a lot because you use it when you ask somebody to repeat something. Repeat that, please, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Reir, perdón. Wrong verb. Uh, or do I have it? Oh, I've got, I've got the wrong verb up here. You know what? I need to change this. I had a major, major brain fart in with that one. Oh, no, I see what I did. Repetir. Okay. Let's, uh, I've got a whole bunch of verbs here. I kind of messed up my whole thing. I'm just giving you verbs that are, are stem changes. Perdón. I went from Okay, I messed up my sequence here. That's why I am a mess. And we'll try to get this back into alignment. Here we go. Uh, here are just some verbs that are e to i, uh, e to I stem changes. I'll try to get that right. Uh, repetir, to repeat. Reir, to laugh. Sonreir, to smile. Competir, to compete. This one, however, we are going to take a look at because this is a special verb and this is a verb that people use a lot, a lot, a lot. And that verb is decir. Decir means to say or to tell. It's not hablar, to speak. Hablar is to speak or to talk. Decir is to say or to tell. So if you want somebody to say, or if you want to say, tell me, you need to know this verb, right? Decir. Uh, this is an E to I stem change, but it's got that funny thing that tener has when it goes to tengo, right? Or venir has when it goes to vengo. It has a go at the end for the yo form. So it gets an E to I stem change, and for yo, it slips that go in as well. So. Uh, I say or I tell is digo, digo, okay? Uh, the G disappears in all the other forms, so it goes back to the C for decir. So we have tú dices, 
tú dices, él dice, ella dice, usted dice, ellos dicen, ellas dicen, ustedes dicen. Right? But for nosotros, we go, go back to decimos. Decimos. Bien. Vale. So, decir muy importante. Seguir muy importante. Some of these other ones are uh, actually repetir. You should know, but we'll, we'll practice that more next week. Um, okay. Here's a question that may come to mind. You may say to yourself, hmm, if there are E to I, E stem changes, and there are E to I stem changes, how do you know if it's an IE change or if it's an I change? And sadly, you just have to know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, here's the one thing you can say with a certain amount of certainty. The category of E to IE, like entiendo, like uh, la película empieza. The E to IE category is much, much bigger in Spanish. There are many, many more verbs that have an E to IE stem change. So if you kind of just know, here are the verbs that are E to I's. Uh, okay, that's how you know. It's a memorization thing. But that E to I category of verbs is a very small one. So it's not too tough to get familiar with them because they're just a tiny, they're a tiny subset compared to everything else. Um, I will give you some fill in the blanks with E to I stem changes, like I like you had last this last week. Okay, so you'll have questions with everything else. Um, you'll have some fill in the blanks with this new category. Está bien? We good with that? Okay, magnifico. So, little introduction. I'll, I'll also send you a, a video that will talk about those so you can hear them over and over in your head before you do the fill in the blank uh, homework that you'll have for next week. Ah, vale. Muy bien. Hay preguntas. ¿Tienen ustedes preguntas o no? No? Nada? Ok. Let's talk a little more. This is um, a vocabulary thing, but we're getting all those forms of algún and ningún. We're going to get that down pat. Uh, we have a little video about this, and I am going to tell you that uh, there is a big category. Oh, I'm going to write on my little board. I could use my Zoom board, but I'm, I'm going to choose not to use my Zoom board. I'm going to choose to use this instead. Ugh. You will find that there are a whole bunch of words in Spanish. Let's start with that. A whole bunch. You know, you just had alguno, right? Or algún, alguna, algunos, algunas. There are other verbs that start with this. And the reason I haven't sent you straight to the book is that there are so many words that start with this, it becomes a nightmare when you've got to memorize like four or five of them and remember them all the time. Yikes. But um, all these little words that start with A-L-G, Al, tend to have some connotation of some, someone, something, Somebody, okay. Um, or just some. <laughs> Punto. Uh, so, it's good to know that all the words that start with this are considered 
they're considered affirmative. What do I mean by that? I don't necessarily mean yes. <laughs> we think affirmative, yes. Okay. Uh, affirmative as in something that really exists, that really is out there, okay? Um, all the words that start with this have a corresponding opposite, and the corresponding opposite is considered a negative word. And the negative word that corresponds will usually start with an N might be an N-A, it might be an N-I, it might be, yeah, yeah, N with something else. So in other words, it's, it's, it's going to imply a negative, something that doesn't exist, <laughs> right? So there's always going to be a corresponding opposite or contrast to a word that starts with ag, and it'll be a negative. It's going to start with an N word or an N letter. Yeah? Okay. All right, let's take a look. But we're going to take these apart. And we're going to take them in chunks. So we're going to share uh, a little bit more about this mystery of uh, algún, alguno, alguna, algunos, algunos, and its opposites. The opposite of algún, alguno, alguna. Algunos, alguna, uh, alguna, algunas. Wow, I wanted to have that as an A, perdón. Is ninguno, ninguno, or ninguna. Okay. Always know that algún is just a shortening. That's all it is. It is a shortening of that word alguno. Algun is used when it is used in front of a masculine singular noun. If the word stands by itself, that is without the noun, then it goes to that long form of alguno. So that's why we've got an algun slash alguno. Algun is just a shortened form of alguno, and ningun is just a shortened form of the word Ninguno. It's just a shortened form. Again, ninguno is used when it's in front of a noun that is masculine and singular. Okay. Alguna, alguno, alguna, some. Algunos, algunos, algunas, some. Ningun, ninguno, ninguna. None or not one or not any. We express that different ways in English. We might express ningun as not any at all, or none, or not even one. <laughs> English does that in a bunch of different ways. Okay, so let's take a look at that. When you want to give a vague quantity of some, you know, this is like quantifying somebody, or excuse me, quantifying something, quantifying a noun but doing it in a vague way. You're just saying there's some of this quantity. You're not giving a definite amount. Aquí tenemos ejemplos. Here we have examples. Hay alguna comida en la nevera? Hay alguna comida? Is there some food? Meaning just a vague quantity, right? Hay alguna comida en la nevera? Tengo algunos amigos en el Canadá. I have some friends in Canada. Tengo algunos amigos. Algunos amigos. We need algunos because amigos is a masculine plural, right? Vamos a bailar con algunas chicas. We're going to dance with some girls. Oh, we don't know how many, just some of them. Vamos a bailar con algunas chicas. So this whole thing of matching up uh, masculine singular words, feminine singular words, masculine plural, feminine plural. It happens because this word alguna is, or algunos, whichever form it takes, functions as an adjective. It's a quantifying adjective. Now here we've got the shortened masculine form. ¿Quieres algún recuerdo? 
¿Quieres algún recuerdo? Do you want some kind of souvenir? Any old one. Algún recuerdo. And algún cannot be alguno. This is, there are a few words in Spanish that are, are like this, where they truncate, they shorten the adjective. There are a few words that fall in that category. This is one of them. Alguno becomes algún. It drops the O at the end, algún. Okay. Why does algún drop the O? Well, some words just do that. <laughs> You'll see later on others that do that. It, it's not a whole lot of words that do that, but there are a few. If the word algún stands alone, if it is used uh, without the masculine singular noun it talks about, then it takes that O back. So two people might say back and forth to each other. One person may ask, ¿Tienes algún dinero? Do you have some money? Any old amount? ¿Tienes algún dinero? Ah, the answer may come back. Claro, tengo alguno. I have some. And because I'm using alguno without the noun dinero, alguno takes back the O. In the response, it's understood I'm referring to dinero. I'm just dropping the word dinero. So because I drop that noun dinero, I have to take the O back to from with algún, and it becomes alguno, okay? So that is why that happens. There are a few words in Spanish that will do that. The negative form of, of alguno, the opposite, will do that as well. Okay, fun fact. I told you about ALG, right? Related words. Algo means something. Not some, something. Algo. Nada means nothing. <laughs> so here are two more uh, words that, you know, have similar beginnings, right? They're, they're opposites of each other, an affirmative and a negative. The affirmative is algo, something. The negative opposite is nada, nothing at all, okay? Algo. Tengo algo en mi bolsillo. I have something in my pocket. Tengo algo. And algo is always algo. Algo does not go off into like feminine forms or plural forms. It's just always algo. Algo. Okay? So you can see how alguno is kind of phonetically related to that word. Alguno is related to algo, right? Uh, no tengo nada en la mano. I have nothing or I don't have anything in my hand, right? And I have nothing versus I don't have anything. In English, that means the same thing. We just use different words to express the idea. No tengo nada en la mano. No tengo nada en la mano. You need to use nada as a double negative, meaning we need to have that word no in front of the verb. Tengo. And then we follow up with nada. No tengo nada en la mano. Many negatives in Spanish need to be double negatives. In English, that's a big no-no. In Spanish, it is a big you must do it. <laughs> uh, negative sentences often have to have double negatives, meaning two negative words in the sentence to make them sound right to them. Okay, so good to know that algo is not the same as alguno, but they're related words, right? Algo is an affirmative expression, something. Nada is the opposite, negative. A ver, okay, let's look at the negative side of algún. It's opposite. Ningún or the longer form ninguno, if it stands alone without a noun, or ninguna, none. 
Again, if ning, uh, ninguno is used if it stands alone without the noun it refers to, otherwise we shorten it to ningun. So, me prestas algún lápiz? Can you lend me a pencil, meaning any old one that you have handy, right? Me prestas algún lápiz? Algún lápiz. Not alguno lápiz, just algún lápiz. Uh, somebody may answer you in the negative. No, no, no puedo. No tengo ningún lápiz. I don't have any. I don't have any. Or I have none. <laughs> en español, ningún, no tengo ningún lápiz. Or if the lapis is understood and we drop the word lapis, it grows back, ningún goes back and grabs the old back for itself. No tengo ninguno. No ten, tengo ninguno. I don't have any. And I drop the word lapis. I don't have any. Or I have none. Bien? Más ejemplos. Some more examples. ¿Tienes alguna idea? Do you have some idea? No, no tengo ninguna idea. I have no idea. No tengo ninguna idea. No tengo ninguna. I have none. <laughs> Same thing. Okay. The word none in Spanish is usually singular. Because you don't have even one. So it's got to be... Ningún or ninguna, or ninguno, if it takes the O back. Uh, uh, no me gusta ningún alcohol. I don't like any alcohol, any kind, right? Ningún alcohol. No me gusta ninguna bebida alcohólica. I don't like any alcoholic drink. Then it's ninguna bebida, no drink. Bebida femenina, ninguna femenina. Ninguna bebida alcohólica just describes the kind of drink, right? If a noun by, just by nature of what it is, happens to be a plural word, then you might hear the plural ningunos or ningunas used, but it is not a frequent thing. It is kind of a rare thing. So, por ejemplo, Entonces, no tengo ningunos pantalones limpios. I don't have any clean pants. Because pants, two legs, it's pants. No tengo ningunos pantalones limpios. Ningunos pantalones because pants happens to be a plural word. No quiero llevar ningunas gafas. I don't want to wear uh, any glasses. I don't want to wear any glasses. You know, gafas. It, yeah, there are two lenses. So, lentes or gafas is a plural word, right? Ah, otro ejemplo. Here's another one of the rare, rare, rare words that would use a plural. Scissors, <laughs> because there are two blades, right? And we say scissors, plural. It's only one pair of scissors. Oh, think about that. But they're two choppy sides, right? So scissors, even in English, would you say these scissors is purple? These scissors are purple, yeah? Okay. Uh, scissors does the same thing in Spanish, right? Tijeras. It just happens to be a plural word. So in those rare instances, and those are probably the only three you're gonna hear, you might hear ningunos or ningunas go to a plural form. Otherwise, it's not gonna happen, okay? So what you need to know, basically, uh, oh, perdón, is uh, the uh, ningun, or ninguna. What you need to know is that one. Okay. Tienen preguntas? Do you have any questions? Marilyn, I have a quick question about mm -hmm. nada. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a negative, but when we're saying gracias 
And then someone says, de nada. How does that, what's the distinguishing about de, between de the nada, two? De nada means of nothing. Oh, if you say thank you, does somebody often respond in English, oh, it was nothing? They might. Instead of you're welcome, they might say, oh, it was nothing. Okay. And they're being pretty emphatic, usually. They say it that way in English. Um, that, uh, de nada is just what they use to say you're welcome. It's like saying, oh, it was nothing. There are other ways to say you're welcome, <laughs> but that is the most common, the de nada response. It's just a phrase you have to learn. Those two words connect together to me to be the equivalent of our, you're welcome. Um, it's a modismo, it's just a saying, the way they say it. Bien. Um, I want to, is it okay to take about three minutes over time to do a little practice on album? Okay, mind me giggle. Um, I want to see if you can get this, and I may have to slow it down. I've been trying to remember if I need to slow this one down or pause it. I might need to. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, some examples of algún, alguna, algunos, algunas. And I am hoping I've got the right video because there are two on these. Uh, vamos a ver. I don't want to show you the one I showed you last week. I'm hoping I've got the right one here. If I've got the wrong one, give me a thumbs down <laughs> as we get along. Just let me know. If I see thumbs down, I'll know it's wrong. Hola. En esta lección, vamos a practicar algún, ningún y las demás formas. Before watching this video, you might watch the previous video on algún, ningún, and the other forms of those words. Okay, let me forward it. Did we look at this side of it? Sí o no? Okay. I will put it up to the examples. I don't think you saw these examples. Whoop. Okay. This video if you need more time and check the word bank if you aren't sure about a word. Okay. Solo me gustan. A mí. A mí. Just says, it's emphasizing the me. Solo me gustan. Algunas. Bien. Solo me gustan algunas frutas. Yeah, some fruits. Ah. En la fiesta bailan y otros miran. Some dance and some just watch. Otros means others. Oh, son. Yeah, we're talking about just people in general, right? En la fiesta, algunos bailan y otros miran. And not algún, but algunos. algunos plural, yeah. We've got bailan plural, right? Algunos okay. bailan, some dance, meaning some people, right? Okay. We're just referring to some people in general. Algunos bailan y otros miran. Refresco es a soda, a soft drink. Alguno? Qué barbaridad. Ningún refresco está frío. And they're, you're talking about, yeah, they're, they're, they took the negative. Yeah. Let me back that up a little bit so you can see it. Que barbaridad, ningún fre... So somebody forgot to put stuff in the cooler, right? Oh, oh yeah, you get to the party. Uh, uh, nobody put anything into the cooler. Ningún re... Uh, none of these are cold, right? Ningún refresco, meaning not even one of these things is cold. Ningún refresco está frío. Ningún refresco está frío. Uh, ya 
is asking, oh, okay, comieron. You don't know comieron. Comieron means you guys ate in the past. It's not comen, you are eating. It's you guys ate. And the ya means already. Ya comieron means did you already eat? Algunas. 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 Ya comieron algunas manzanas. Magnifico. Nubes are clouds. You should know that it's la nube. La nube, the cloud. La nube, nubes es femenina. Uh, and the seven means they look like. Nubes en el cielo se ven como animales. Uh, clouds in the sky look like animals. So, ninguna? Ninguna? Okay. Algunas nubes en el cielo se ven como animales. Some cloud, you know, when you lay down, you're a little kid, you lay down in the grass, you look up at the sky. Here, I don't know where you can lay down in the grass in Arizona, but you know, saben, en un parque quizás, ¿no? Algunas nubes, so some clouds look like animals. Algunas nubes se ven como animales. Ah, no, I. Ooh, that no is important. There isn't. There isn't. No, I. No, hay ninguna persona interesante en esta familia. Yeah, there's there's nobody. We would probably even shorten to that. This say there's nobody. There is not even one. There is not even one interesting person. There isn't an interesting person. Notice how in English we, we can really put a lot of words in here to mean the same thing. People learning English have to figure out how do you use it? Is there only one more right way to say that? <laughs> there is not a single interesting person. There's not even one interesting person. Mm -hmm. Así. Héctor piensa que. Piensa que. He thinks that. Okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to say not, uh, they're making this one a negative one. Héctor mm -hmm. does not like the uh, rom com movies. Mm -hmm. He does not want to go see a chick movie with his girlfriend when he's out on a date. Ninguna. Ninguna. Héctor piensa que ninguna película romántica es buena. Necesito. Oh, necesito lavar. I need to wash. Mi ropa, my clothes. Porque no encuentro, because I can't find. Ninguna. Ninguna. Necesito lavar mi ropa porque no encuentro ninguna camisa limpia. And it can't be ningún ca camisa because camisa is a feminine word, right? Ninguna camisa, ninguna camisa limpia. Uh, and notice in English, can't find any. <laughs> can't find any. We probably wouldn't say can't find no clean shirt. <laughs> I can find no clean shirt. Well, that's grammatically correct, but nobody would say it. I can find no clean shirt. You wouldn't say it that way. You would say can't find any. How do you explain that to somebody learning English? Yeah, no sé. I don't know. English is weird. Beatriz no sabe to oh, tocar, play us an instrument. Oh, and the no is important, guys. The no is Beatriz no sabe tocar. Ninguna. Beatriz no sabe tocar ningún instrumento. Hmm. Ningún instrumento. The no is important. We're signaling we want a negative word there by saying no sabe, doesn't know. In English, you can say doesn't know any, and any by itself doesn't really tell you none, but doesn't play any. Yeah, so the no in, in our, our sentence there, no sabe tocar, doesn't know how to play, that's telling us, ah, we need to plug in a negative idea. 
ningún instrumento. And because ningún is standing with the noun instrumento, it drops that O at the end of ninguno. Ningún instrumento. Bien. Ah. Idi oh, oh, there's a trick. Idioma looks like it should be a feminine word, but look at the word in front of it. Otro idioma. Otro is a masculine word. Otro idioma means another language. The word idioma is el idioma. El idioma. It's a word for language. So it's el gun. Sabes algún otro idioma? Algún, algún otro idioma. And that one's kind of a trick. Well, it's not meant to be a trick, but el idioma, this is one of the odd words in Spanish, el idioma, it's a masculine word, even though it ends in an A. Okay, bien. Oh, zapatos nuevos, there's an easy one. Carla quiere comprar, Carla wants to buy. Algunos. Yeah, you wouldn't say she wants to buy none, would you? Carla quiere comprar algunos zapatos nuevos. Oh, Carmen Miró. Miró is a past, and it means looked at. Looked at. Instead of she's looking at right now, it's she looked at. Carmen Miró, she looked at. Algunos vestidos. Algunos vestidos. She looked at some dresses in la tienda. We're telling where she did that. En la tienda, in the store. store. Pero no le gustó. And now instead of she likes, we're saying she liked past. No le gustó. No le gustó. She didn't like any. Any. ¿Cómo se dice any? Oh, we have no noun we're pairing it up with. No le gustó. She didn't like any. Ninguno. Ninguno. Carmen miró algunos vestidos en la tienda, pero no le gustó ninguno. Now, why didn't we use the ningún? Because there's no noun. We're, we're not pairing it up with vestido. It's standing by its lonesome self. And when it stands by its lonesome self without the noun, the noun is just implied, it takes back the O. It goes back to ninguno. No trajo? Oh, I don't work. Con, with. Ooh, this is a harder one. No trabajo con ninguno de mis amigos. That's a hard one. No. Muy bien. That's all for this video lesson over okay. Ninguno de, uh, none of my friends, meaning not even one of them. Ninguno standing by, it doesn't have a noun next to it. Ninguno. Mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah, the ninguno goes back, takes back the O because ninguno de, the word is next to is de. It's not next to amigos. It's next to de. Yeah. So that was a hard one at the end. It, well, thankfully, they didn't use that as a first example. Okay, entienden un poquito mejor. Do you understand a little better how we use algún? It helps to see these in context of the yeah. whole sentence. Bien. Um, uh, okay, bien. I will probably, I will see, I think I've got, I might have a second video that gives you more examples, which I'll probably send those in the emails so that you can see them because it always helps to see the examples that's how you cement it in your brain yeah? uh okay eso es todo para hoy that's all for today right you're going to get um a couple little videos to watch on these uh you'll get the um fill in the blanks on the e to i category only okay like you had to prepare for this week but just that one category and you'll get some conversational questions to speak with each other in a longer session on, on STEM changes. All of them mixed together. Bien? Está bien? Yes, sí. Perfecto. Mm -hmm. I, I preguntas. Any questions you've got? Mm -hmm. No? Para nada. No, no, nothing. Okay. Uh, bien. 
I will end the recording, but I'm going to leave this on a bit. If anybody wants to chat, has a question or lo que sea. Nos vemos después.